Hallelujah. Uh, eyes are weekend. Hey, come, come, come. Come on, guys. Our weekend today. Our weekend has been okay. Thank you, sir. We've enjoyed. Uh, wow. Ah, uh, I thank God. I'm to preach on on uh, every Saturday, so I can be able to ask, "How is our weekend?" Amen. God bless us all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, let us pray. Amen. Father, we thank you this evening. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your care. We thank you for what you are still going to do. And we thank you for what you have done in the past. We thank you for your word that you have heard. We say, Father, glory be to your name in Jesus' name. And for those Amen. that are watching, and for those that will hear this word hereafter, I pray that the power of the Lord will be upon our lives, upon your lives, and will transform our life for better in the mighty name of Jesus. And as those that Amen. have not joined, that are still on their way, may the Lord see your first step to join in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we Amen. pray. May I not speak, but may you speak in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let somebody hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, I greet our mommies in the house, our daddies in the house, our aunties, uh, there is no much brothers in the house. What happened? Uh, does that mean we don't preach to our brothers? I hardly see brothers in the house. Uh, is this place meant for women alone? So so that so we can run. Mm. Mm? Uh, uh, no, uh, that is Jeff. I, I I want to ask. I said. Is this place made for women alone? Maybe we can run. Praise the Lord. No, we are actually <laughs> encouraging them to bring their spouses to bring their children. It's a family-oriented ministry. So we <laughs> encourage our brethren to come. So we have got a program where the mothers are going to be meeting the sisters to encourage them to bring their um, children also and their husbands to join us. So that we can we put a word for the fathers, for the mothers, and for the children. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you are welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Um, Without wasting time, Amen. we have we have a little we have little little message. Can I say? Can I call it little message? Uh, it is a small message, but let's believe it's small but mighty because the word of God is ever fresh and mighty. Uh, without wasting time, I want us to look at the topic that said. Greater work than this shall you do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Greater Hallelujah. work than this shall ye do. Greater work than this shall ye do. Greater work than this must you do. Greater work than this. Must every pastor greater work than must every choir do? Greater work, greater singing, greater song than this must every choir sing. 
Great time. Oh, yes. yes, let them have some understand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic said, greater work than this shall you do. Greater work than this you shall do. That is in another better way. Greater work than this you shall do. I think that is a better way for you to get it. Greater work than this you shall do. Praise the Lord. Uh, have we written it down? Is there anybody who doesn't get the topic? Greater work than this shall you do. Greater work than this shall you do. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that is that is the topic. I've dropped it in the bus uh in the uh, board. Praise the Lord. If you can hear me, can you unmute your mouth? Shout hallelujah. 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 God bless you. God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless us in Jesus' name. Okay, let us go. John chapter 14, verse 12b. Or can we read verse 12 alone? Let's read verse 12 for better understanding. John chapter 14. Let's see that. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I start from verse 12, which is the only verse we're going to read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, are you with me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth of me, the work that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because... I go unto my Father. Praise the Lord. The question is this. As a born again, today I'm, I want to talk to born again. I don't want to talk to unbelievers. Unbeliever has nothing to do. 95% of Bible verse is talking about Christians. It's talking about believers. It's talking about born again. It's talking about heavily minded Christian, heavily minded, born again, heavily focused Christian. He's talking about those that know how to preach. He's talking about those that think they stand. He's talking about those that know how to preach online. He's talking about those that appear live on Facebook. He's talking about those that preach on the street. He's talking about that seat. 95% of Bible verse is talking about us. But let us leave the people in the world today. Let us talk to ourselves, which says, greater work shall we do. Now, what does it mean to do greater work? That shows that you must do more than the person that you succeeded. You must do more than your successor. Greater work than this shall you do. That means if your master preached 200, he preached in a 200 cities. The word said, greater work than this shall you do. It simply means you are to preach in more than 500 cities. For it is written to him, much is given. Much is also what expected. Greater work than this shall you do. Let us go to point one. Without wasting time. Point one said, Joshua succeeded Moses. Praise the Lord. Joshua succeeded Moses. I will be very happy if somebody can be helping me to drop it on the board for better understanding for those who will write it down. Joshua succeeded Moses. 
Joshua succeeded Moses. When Jesus was leaving, he said, I go unto my father. I go unto my father. I go unto my father. He was just repeating it. But then he needed to give us power because he wanted us to do greater. Bible said that, <clears throat> Bible said that if the work that Christ have done was to be written in the Bible, he said there will not be any space left for any other thing to be written there. Definitely means that all the space in the Bible will, contain, will not contain the work that Christ has done. And yet, Christ tells us that we shall do greater than him. We shall do greater than him. That means we must preach more than Christ. That means we must trek more than Christ. That means we must be able to do anything to make sure that a soul is added to the kingdom of God more than Christ. That means we no longer eat physical food just because we want to satisfy our body, but we, want, we eat it to hold our strength and based on spiritual food which is the word of God, and then share that spiritual food. You see, when you are eating, and when you have eaten, and you are fed very well, and your stomach is loaded with food, and the food is still remaining on the plate, excess, and then you pour it away, you have not done well. You are to give the remaining food out. Why? The, the, the cripples in the book, I think second king or first king, the, the, the cripples there, when they have eaten, they have drunken, they said to each other. If we go not and tell those in the city that there are a lot of food here, he said, we do not well. They are cripples. They did greater than those that have legs. We have testimonies of people that are, don't have legs, don't have hands. We watch Pastor Mickey, who does not have hands. I don't know whether that is his name. He doesn't have hands, doesn't have legs. I don't know whether, it's, though I, I'm still yet to look into very, very well. But assuming what he's doing is changing life, adding so to Christ, how much more we that have two legs, two hands? It's a big question. He's doing greater. He's trying to beat the high calling of Christ upon his life. Are we beating that high calling? Greater work than this shall ye do. When Christ said that, he gave us power. He gave us everything. Hey, hey. hey you bow, we say, Aram, Anisha, fire tea. That means he sends you message. He supports you. He is with you. In Matthew chapter 18, uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, he said, and Jesus spoke unto them, saying, he said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Go in, therefore, into all the world. But we like all the power that Jesus gave us. We like to make use of the power for our own self, which said, I gave you power. That is Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He said, I gave you power unto, you know, I gave you power over serpent and scorpions. <laughs> Serpent and scorpion shows that we should use that one in case they want to bite us, in case the kingdom of darkness is attacking us, in case enemy. That is the one we normally like to use, but we have forgotten the one he gave us in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And you shall receive power, and when the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be a witness for me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria. And almost uttermost part of the earth simply means we we bear witness, we, we must preach, we must do greater. Since Jesus was not able to come to Nigeria, you must 
the gospel must be able, you must beat the tarts that said greater work than this. Do you think Jesus is joking? Do you think the Bible is just written there for, for, for a joke or for drama? No, 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 no. Greater work than this shall he do. That point one said Joshua succeeded Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 14. Let us go there. Deuteronomy 31, verse... Deuteronomy 31, verse 14. If you are there, you can read. If anybody gets there before me, you can read. Deuteronomy 31, verse 14. Verse 14, he said, And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation, in the tabernacle of in the tabernacle of congregation, and that I may give him a charge. That I may give him a charge, and Moses and Joshua went and present themselves in the tabernacle. Of, of the congregation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, they went and them themselves. Joshua was to take over. Now, what Moses was not able to do, Joshua must do it. Hmm. Let me start like this. Since your pastor in your church left or down, because the only thing that can make you to take a position or to assume authority is when your predecessor died, you are to take authority. When Moses was to die, Moses was not the one that chose Joshua. Mm -mm. Because if Moses were to choose, Joshua is not in the list. He will have chosen Achan a long time ago because Achan knew how to fight before he stole, he stole from God and was wiped out from the face of the earth. Moses will have chosen Caleb, which also was a man of war. <laughs> he will have chosen Caleb. Joshua was just a young soldier. Who knows Joshua? Who is he? Joshua, the son of Nun. You see, he wouldn't have chosen, but he chose him because God chose him. It was not Moses who called Moses, uh, who called Joshua. I said, Joshua, oh, you have been working with me. No, Moses was not even ready to pick him. But God said, Moses, he said, you must die. A time has come for you to die. Then bring Joshua. Bring Joshua. I wonder, people are fighting for position. If you see people fighting for position in the church, you wonder that, ah, ah, is when you now win this, they now turn the church to gov uh, governmental, parliamentary, what they call them, politicians. They now want to win. And then when they get there, they don't even preach. They want to eat money. You are fighting for position. Joshua did not fight. You are telling the members, it's me that will sit there or nobody else. <laughs> then, Joshua did not tell the congregation of Israel, when Moses died, you must vote me or else I will remove myself. I will go back to Egypt. What are you telling us today? What are you telling them in your churches? Hey, if I don't resume that authority, I will withdraw my tithes. I will withdraw my support. I've been in this church for long. We started it. Joshua never said, if they don't choose me, hey, Moses, if you don't, you know I'm very close to you. If you don't choose me, <laughs> I will withdraw my sword and then enemies will come upon us. I will, fall, I will go and leak the secret. Uh, I will go and tell them our weak points so they can come and wipe you people off. No. Joshua never said that. He, was, he waited. God chose him. And when God chose him, he was not in haste to be there. Even if he doesn't want to be there. That is why God began to encourage him. He said, Joshua, you must be courageous. 
for I will be with you. People no longer wait for God to be with them. They want to be with God. People want to help God to do his work in the church. At times we want to help God. We can't even do greater work than the person that was there before. I want to ask you a question. And you that are listening to this message online, that are fighting for position. The big question is this to you. Since you have been fighting to sit on that seat, tell me, tell us, how many so have you won? <laughs> that is the big question. How many so have you won? That person that was on that seat before, he has preached to 20 cities. He has gone to 20 countries to preach. He has won 2,000 so for God in, 10, in five years. I want to ask you a question. In six months, have you been able to win one so? In one year, we are able to win one so. You see now, you know what the heart is telling you. <laughs> you see, you are not worthy to be there. Because if you are to be there, greater work than that person that was sitting down there before. Shall you do? Look at it. Moses left. Joshua took over from Moses and finish it, which means to do greater work than Moses. Praise does not go to the person that started the work. No, it's the one that finishes it. Prize is not for those that start the race. It is for the one that finishes it. It was the one that finished it. The work, not the one that finishes it. Mm -mm. It's the one that finished the work that praise go to, that received the prize. When Moses could not be able to take the Israelites to the, the land of Canaan, but Joshua did. He took them there. No matter how small it is, he did greater than Moses. Have it in your mind. He did greater than Moses. Because he saw the land of Canaan, he entered it, he lived in it, he ate the fruit thereof. He drank from that milk that was flowing and that honey. Have you done greater than the person you succeeded on the church, on the throne, in the family, in the place of work? Greater work than this, are you doing? Christ told us, greater work than this. You don't need to fight. There was a time I was in a one church. Then I, I, I used to preach for the youth. I preached to the youth. So the youth, they went to go and report me. They said my preaching is all about hellfire, rapture. Uh, they say I preach in a way that they always feel like hellfire is under their chair. And they said they are afraid. That most of them go home, they dream about hellfire. So they report me to the pastor. So their report was this. So after they reported me, well, some of the church members called me to order. They said, they called for a meeting. They said, I have to limit and mellow down my message that uh, the person taking them before was not even teaching them like that. That uh, I must add academic, academic uh, life, so many things, then I cannot be adding like even small. <laughs> I told them, instead of me to do that, for the person that called me to work said, greater work than this must you do. I preach. You must preach, mother me. Greater. Greater that work than that. Moses could not finish it, but Joshua did it. Praise the Lord. He did it. Let's see Deuteronomy chapter 30, 31, verse 7. Let's go to verse 7 of that Deuteronomy 31. If you are there, you can read, please. Deuteronomy 31, verse 7. Another person, Joshua chapter 11, verse 23. Deuteronomy 31, verse 7. If you are there, you can read for us. God bless you. I hope, I, I hope you all can hear me. Amen. Um, 
Deuteronomy 31 verse 7, and I read in Jesus' name. Amen. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, be strong and be of good courage, for thou must go with the people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto thy, their fathers to give them, and thou shalt, thou shalt cause them to inherit it. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, George Moses did not reach there. He told Joshua, when he told Joshua, you have been chosen by God, Joshua became a friend. How can I meet these great people? Moses said, Joshua, you need to be courageous. For some people, they don't even wait for them to be chosen. They're already reigning as a king. You're not being chosen to replace the person. Are you praying that the person should die before you start fighting for the, for the seats? Are you people in the world? Are you politicians in church? Yes, you are listening to me on Facebook, on internet, everywhere you are. I wish this message goes viral than this. Those who fight. No, Joshua never fight. You can see it. Greater work than this. He was choosing for greater work. He became afraid. When you know what you are going to do, you will be afraid. When you know the cost of greater work, you will not rush for the position. <laughs> you will not rush. Because you will be lost, consumed by the work you are going to do. It's people of the world that fight for position. Not the people of Christ. For it is only spirit work to choose, not your work to choose. Moses did not choose Joshua. God chose Joshua. God chose Joshua. He said that Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, in the sight of all Israel, wait, let them call you first. Let prayer be made first. Let prayer be made first. And then let God speak. Let know whether you are the one in line to be taken, to take over. Not because of what you will eat, and excitement will kill you. Because when you get there, hey, to resume authority in God, to resume a, a, a seat in the work of God, is resuming night vigil, resuming preaching, resuming prayerless, you know, tireless. You must preach, you must do this, you must do that. They must call you anything. You must be, you are a servant. You are not a, a you are not a girl, as is he used to say, we used to say here. You are not to be served, but you are to serve. You are to be served, not to be served. That's why he said, in the sight of Israel, he told him there, yeah, because he saw the way Joshua was shaking. He said, Be strong and of good courage, for thou must go with these people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. It means I am not able to get there. You must finish it. You must finish it. Joshua did it. He finished it. Will you be able to finish when you enter that post? It's a question. You can answer that question in your mind. Joshua chapter 11 verse 23. If you are fighting for position, you are not born again. If you are fighting to be a leader, you are not born again. Have that at the back of your mind. You are not. In fact, if you are truly born again, you will be running for position. You will run away. Because those that are in position, they are entitled either not to make heaven at all because <laughs> devil will go and put pot on fire for them. Start cooking against them. You. Look into your life and repent. Stop endangering your life for born again, uh, for fighting for position. Joshua chapter 11, verse 23. Let's see Joshua 11, 23. Joshua, read in Jesus name. Amen. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said unto Moses. And Joshua gave it for an inheritance unto Israel, according to the divisions by the tribes and the land rested for, for, from war. Amen. 
Moses was not able to get there to share the land. But Joshua got there. He did greater work. Moses divided the rest. Joshua divided the Judah by the power of God. By the power of God. By the power of God. Moses, by his authority, the authority of the Almighty God in his mouth, slew the firstborn of Egyptian. Joshua pulled down the wall of Jericho by the trumpet, by the power of God in him. He did more greater. How many nations was wiped out before Moses? It was not that much. But Joshua finished it. He, he, he shared the land. He, he put things in order. He did more than Josh, Moses. Will you do better than that person that was on that, on that chair before? Can you do better than him? Are you very sure? Look at your heart. You say yes. You think you can do it? You can't do it without God's help. So if you are in the spirit, you will never fight for position. Joshua never did. But because he never did, that was why he depended on God and God led him through. And then he did it according to how God wanted. He finished the war. He did greater than Moses. The question is, since your boss, your leader, the Jew of your church died and went to rest and went to glory. Now you are representing him or her. How have you affected the church in a positive way? How have you affected the place of work in your positive way? How have you affected the family in a positive way? Your leader won 20 souls per month. But since you took over or planning to take over, how many souls have you won for God? How many times have you go out for evangelism? Remember, greater work than this. Greater work than him that sat there before. Greater work than her that was there before. Greater work than them that was there before. Shall you do, must you do. And that takes us to point two. That takes us to point two. Point two. The point two said, Timothy took over from Paul. Timothy succeeded Paul. Timothy took over from 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 Paul. That is, Timothy succeeded Paul. Timothy succeeded Paul. Timothy succeeded Paul. Timothy succeeded Paul. Timothy Thank you, God bless you. Timothy succeeded Paul. That is point two. Can they help me title it point two? Timothy succeeded Paul. Timothy succeeded Paul. I want us to write it. Timothy succeeded Paul. Yeah. Yes, Timothy succeeded Paul. You see, when Paul was in the prison, all this while Paul was in the prison, after he has planted the church, for the sake of the gospel of Christ, he was put in prison because he went against what he has believed before. He went against also what he disbelieved. Paul was raised, the father of Paul was a Pharisee. He was raised by the Sadducees. So he was one of the people we call the Salhindris. 
The Sahindris are the people who are very close to the law. They are the ones who teach the law. They are the people that carry 180 laws in their head. They don't, even all of us here now, nobody can memorize Ten Commandments and get it correct and arrange it the way it is arranged in the book. No. But these people, they are very smart. Very, very smart. Paul was one of them. And in the law, there is nowhere they wrote in the law with name that Jesus is coming and that Jesus is the Son of God. So Paul was fighting for God. Paul was what you call the Boko Haram of in those, these days. So he was the Boko Haram of his days. Praise the Lord. So he was fighting, killing for God. You see? But when he believed, they put him to prison. He became a traitor to the kingdom of darkness and to those he was working for before. So he must die. He has violated the law. But thank God, he did the work sharply, sharply, sharply. He planted churches. Knowing that, hey, his time is very short. I can be killed anytime. Now, finally, Paul was to go. He was to go. Let's see. Let's see. First Timothy chapter 1. First Timothy chapter 1. I want everybody to open his Bible. First Timothy chapter 1. First Timothy chapter 1. Ah, uh, I will read. Let, let, let's read verse. Sorry, let's, let's go to first, uh, Second Timothy, sorry. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. Let's go to Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter four. Uh, we are going to read verse, verse, um, verse. Let's see. Verse, verse one and two. Verse one and two. If you are there, you can read, please. Second Timothy chapter four, verse one and two. If you are there, you can read. Uh, and I read in Jesus' name. Second Timothy four, verses one to two. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Verse 2. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Provoke, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. Amen. Amen. Can you see? He begin to charge Timothy. Timothy has been chosen by God to complete the work of Saul, of Paul. He began to admonish Timothy. Hey, Timothy, this work is not easy. Don't think it's something. Don't think it's bread and butter. This work is not bread and butter. Timothy needs to get ready. He needs to get ready. And then he began to tell him. He said in verse 2, preach the word. Be instant in season. Will you be accurate in season? Will you know the time that people are going to have? Will you know the time that people are supposed to hear the word? Will you be able to preach early money, money crying? To preach when people are still on their bed. Be instant in season. Huh? And you want to resume the post. You want to fight for the post? He said, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Some of us we like to be reproved, we like to reprove others. We like to we like to rebuke others. We don't like people to rebuke us. When we are wrong, let's accept we are wrong. Let us be let let allow ourselves to be rebuked. We are not God. It's only God that cannot be rebuked. We are not God. 
We are not God. So, you see, he knew he was about to die. Let's go to verse 7. Let's hear what to tell why he was giving Timothy the charge. Let's see why he was giving Timothy the charge. The charge. The charge. Timothy was to continue now. Yes, let's see. Can somebody read verse 7? I have fought a good fight. I have I, finished my course. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Verse 8. Amen. Um, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Can Amen. you see, thank God that it was not only for Paul, it was also for everyone that loved the appearance of the Christ. It was for also those that took over after their predecessor. So if you did the work very well, the crown of life is waiting for you. If you are fighting for position where you are not born again because of money, because of power, because you want to be known, then crown of life is not for you. You have gained the crown of seat. Then you will perish with your crown of seat on earth. Your fame is nothing when heaven did not even recognize your name. If you are Jew of a church, of an office, and then you, everybody is bowing down for you. Oh, sir. Oh, daddy Jew. <laughs> hey, mommy Jew. Hmm. Hey, Uncle Gio. And heaven is saying, hey, firewood for hair fire. Hey, firewood for hair fire. They are shouting that you're a firewood for hair fire in heaven. And on earth, we are shouting daddy in heaven. Your case will be like the rich man. He died and was buried. But your leader has died and was carried by the angels. <laughs> your leader has died and is in heaven. But you will soon die in that post because you are fighting for it and you will be buried, not, be, not being carried by the angels. You better repent and give your life to Christ. Timothy never fight also. He was even scared. When you see a true believer, a born again, within, without, pure born again, Ready for heaven, heavenly focused, heavenly minded, heavenly conscious, he will be afraid of position. And if being choosing, he will want to run because he knows the Bible says, Let him that thinketh stand, take heed, lest he fall. Lest he fall. Lest he fall. I have fought a good fight. This now tells Timothy that yes, yes. Yes. In another Bible, he said, my time of departure is come. So he knows that he's going. In Acts Timothy, in verse 8, in verse 9, he said, do thou diligent to come shortly unto me. You see, because he knows he's about to die. He's not help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's open our Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1. Let's see what he tells Timothy. Because you know he was, he was going to that. He tells Timothy to be serious. He tells Timothy to be serious. serious Timothy, Timothy needed seriousness to resume the seat, to become the next leader online. He needed to be serious. You are not serious. People don't find your work worthy. You see, you are not serious. And then you want to resume post. If you are there, read, read 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, and I'm reading Jesus' name. Unto yeah. Timothy, my own son, in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mayest change some that they teach no other doctrine. Verse 4. Never give heed to feeble and endless genealogies. 
that which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is the faith, so do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Timothy needed to be serious. He need to be serious. Ha. He needed to be serious. That's what I was telling him. He said, he said in that verse, in that, in that verse uh, 2 to 4, he said, unto Timothy, my own son, in the faith, grace and mercy, pray for him. Because the work he needs, want to resume, is a dangerous work. It's a work that can take his life. If you are resuming post, I want to let you know, post, if you are truly going to work for Christ, your life can be taken you know, on that seat. Yes. Because you'll be exposed. You are now like a sheep. Remember how your master died. Remember how Jesus died. He didn't die peaceful death. Though nobody's praying that we should die painful death. But let's expect any time for the sake of the gospel. For if we die any painful death in Christ, for the sake of the gospel, if we lose our life, we shall find it again, saved by Christ. And in verse 3, he said, As I besought thee to abide thee at Ephesus, when I went unto Macedonia, that thou mightest church some, that they teach no other doctrine. Are you sure when you enter that seat, you will not change the doctrine that the, the, your, your, your leader has been teaching? Are you sure when you resume that post of evangelism leader, you will, now, you will not change the time? And you will not change the message. You understand? <laughs> you will now begin to create your own. Are you sure when you sit there, you will not change the time for service to suit your late coming? Are you sure when you enter there, you will not tell the choir to change their dressing? You want them to look good. Are you sure when you enter there, you will not change the name of the church, of the company? You will not change the name to look lively. Would you say, this one is old. We need to come up to the new, ta to the new taxes. Have you forgotten the word that said, we must not remove the old landmark? Can you imagine? That old landmark that talk about the old time religion. Would you change those things when you climb there? You know yourself. You know. You know what is in your mind. You know why you are fighting. You know you are not worthy of it. That is why you are fighting for it. When you are worthy of it, you can't fight. When you are worthy of it, you cannot do what? You cannot quarrel with anybody. You cannot withdraw your, your support to the company. You cannot withdraw your shares. They cannot do me this. You cannot withdraw your tithes. No. But you know you are not worthy. You have self-interest. That's why you are fighting. May the Lord save your soul in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord save our soul in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. First Timothy chapter 6. Let's go to First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. Verse, verse um, 20. 6 verse 20. Let's hear Amen. what told Timothy, yes? Okay, sorry, sir. And I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thee. Trust avoiding profane and vain babbling, and opposition of science falsely so-called. Praise the Lord. Okay, he said, oh, Timothy, this is what Paul, look, look, he said, hey, Timothy may be persuaded. Are you sure when you enter there, people will not start talking to you? Hey, you need to change it. We are going to vote you there. I don't blame you since you are now being voted. It will enter into the seats. You are voted in the church. I don't know that the church used to vote people. There is one church. I was in one night with G in one program. I was invited. Somebody said we should pray for such a church. In that church, they vote for GO to enter. So every GO must use for five years. The former GO, before they are using 10, 10 years, when the real GO died, before the fake ones enter. So they now begin to use uh, fake uh, GOs. Then the fake GO now instituted that Every geo must use 10 years. 
Then after he used to start 10 years, he have achieved the money, he have built his house, his target is complete, he left. Another one now entered and said, ah, from now on, we will change it to five years. Fine. They took it like that. So every year, they, the church must vote. It's now politics. When they now vote, then the last Jew now said he will not live there, that he had to go 10 years. Then the next Geo to come online, which I've seen himself as, as if he's going to win the election. <laughs> he now told the Geo there, before you leave that seat, we must continue on 10-10. It can never be five. And that one said, no, I'm going the second time. It's 10 years. Then the Geo that is on seat started going to have a list to remain on the seat. Geo! And the one that wants to resume, carry police, go and lock some churches. I pay time for this place. I build that church. I'm done that building brand, so I'm locking it up. So the title will not come to you. The, his church is Jews. They are fighting. You want to resume. But they are not committed. They are talking to you. Are you sure they will not talk to you? Eh? Are you sure they will not talk to you to change? He said he will not talk to you to change. And he said, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babbling and opposition of science, simply called, simply so called. So now we know. We are not to be carried away when we reach that seat. We must know what we are called for. We must remember that great work than the person there. Greater work than Jesus. These are two people we must be targeting. You target to superpass the person that you that left the seat and you target to read to the high calling of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is then you know you are heavily focused. That is then you know you are worthy of that seat. That's when you know you are worthy of that seat. That takes us to point three. Without wasting time, point three, point three. I'm sorry if the message is offending, but you know, that is how he came. That is how the Lord wanted. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, point three said, point three said, uh, but before we go to that point three, you need, your work need to be perfect before God. That is why this message is coming to us. Your work need to be perfect before God. Christ need to find your work perfect. Thank God you are there. Some of us, we are already in the position, but we need to be perfect with God. Let's see. Let's see the book of Revelation chapter 3 before we go to the point 2. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Are we there? Revelation chapter 3, if you are there, shout hallelujah. 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 Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Now, let us go, let us look at what is said about perfect work. Revelation chapter 3. Let's quickly look at verse 2. Amen. Revelation. Revelation chapter 3, verse 2. Uh, yeah. Revelation chapter 3, verse 2. Revelation chapter 3, verse 2. Let's see what you say, yes? Be watch, be watch. Yeah, there you can read. Amen. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain Amen. that are ready to die. For I have found not for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, be watchful. Be watchful. Okay. Be watchful. Be watchful. And strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found the work perfect before God. Be watchful. 
for that thing in that church that is still remaining. That you need to strengthen them before they die. You need to preach the truth before the members scatter. You need to gather the member before they scatter all of them and strengthen them to remain because God said he has not found your work faithful. The reason why God has not found your work faithful is because you know yourself. You know yourself. You know yourself. That you have voted. You are not choosing by God. You are forcing yourself there. Not choosing by God. And so therefore, you are, you are misbehaving. You are misbehaving. So your work has not been found perfect. Because you don't even know why you are there. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's go to point three. Point three said, Elisha took over the mantle for, for greater work. Elisha took up the mantle from Elijah for a greater work. Elisha took up the mantle, mantle from Elijah for greater work. Elisha took up the mantle from Elijah from, for a greater work. Elisha took up the mantle from Elijah for a greater work. Elisha took up the mantle from Elijah for a greater work. God bless you. If you have written it down, God bless you. If you have written it down, let me try to write it down. Elisha. Elisha took up the mantle from Elijah for a greater work. God bless you. God bless you, Jackie. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2. 2 Kings, chapter 2. 2 Kings, chapter 2. Second King chapter two. Second King chapter two. Second King chapter two. Are we there? If you are there, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now if you are there, go to verse eleven to fourteen. Let somebody read from verse 11 to 14. Second King chapter 2, from verse 11 to 14. Second King. The reason why I'm calling that if you are there, read it so that I want to be hearing you. Second okay. King. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Second King chap chapter 2 from verses 11 to 14. I read it. Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horse of fire and part them both asunder. And Elisha went up by the wheel wind into heaven, 12. And Elisha saw it and he cried, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel. 
and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his whole cloth and rent them in two pieces. 13. He took up also the mantle of Elijah and fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. 14. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the water, they parted Kida and Tida, and Elisha went over. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You see, what is killing those that are fighting or killing us today is that we don't ask what you're supposed to ask before assuming authority. There was a place that Elijah asked Elisha, what can I do for you before I'll be taken away from you? <laughs> Elisha said, Lord, my Lord, I need double power, double power, double anointing of your power. Double power of yours is what I need. He did not ask Elisha, I need the double monies you have been collecting. I need that is if Elijah was even collecting money, of which I need is not collecting money. He did not tell Elisha, I need your position in Israel. I want to be recognized in Israel. No, he didn't. He said double power, double portion of your power. We fail to ask for power to assume the position that we want to enter. And that is why when we get there, the problem in that authority overwhelmed us and we are consumed by your power and by the problem surrounding that chair. For every chair has its own worries. The reason is this, let me share it. let me tell you. <laughs> in every country, when a president wants to enter, he will say, yes, I will do this, I will do that. He can even promise them manna from heaven, forgetting that it's in the Old Testament he fell. He think he can fall in the New Testament. He think he can call the manna again. He will promise them heaven food, especially in Nigeria. He promised us rain to fall in June. So many things. They can even tell us that this dry season, you know, if I sit on that chair, rain will fall for people, for farmers. <laughs> so many things that they will promise. Now, they forget that there is trouble on that seat. When they now enter, the trouble overwhelm them. They cannot finish the work again. Then they come back requesting for another year and say, give us another four years and we shall finish it. You now find one big excuse. Are you? Are we not like that? We resume the seat of Jews. We did not even pray. We are not even. We don't even pray that God. We don't pray like a Solomon. The Lord give me wisdom to guide these great people. No, your own is give me car, private jet, so they can be. They can, I can be recognized. Let my house be rented in the moon. Let my house be rented in the moon. Let me live in the sky. I want jet to be flying all over. I want to be in the sky. Is your office in the sky? Eh? Are you preaching to stars? You want to live in the mansion? You want to preach to the president? He forgets that when you are there, you are to go to the streets and pray. You want to assume seat and you don't have passion for so winning. Who are you? You are not the sheep that Christ is talking about. See, Elisha knows that to be in Israel as a prophet, <laughs> he need the double portion of Elijah's spirit because you know about the king of Israel that they can change anytime. And he knows how 
to confront them. You know how Elijah confronted Ahab? Hmm? He needed the double power. That is why he's asking. If you are to resume, you must ask for power. You must ask for power, direction, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, listening ear, meekness. Bible said, God said, God bear witness that Moses is the man, a man that is humble, a man, meekest man. No, 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 no. He said, not Moses. No one is like him in my house. Can God bear witness for you that no one is like you? Can God bear witness that you are meek? Some of us, we are meek in our mouth. We are meek when we are preaching. We are meek when we appear on camera. We look beautiful. We look like the Jesus. There's a topic I wrote sometimes ago. I taught, I taught it. Uh, the topic said, uh, I think I wrote it somewhere. Uh, the topic said, Jesus you know and Jesus you don't know. The Jesus we know is, is the Jesus I know is one in the Bible. But Jesus people don't know, they claim they know. It's Jesus on television, Jesus on calendar that never speaks when you have committees, when you have committees in front of him. You, you must ask for power. Don't ask for what is useless. The power you even want to resume, very soon you two will leave there. Another person will come up. Because you are not resuming a seat, a king of a king's seat. Can you see? Can you imagine? He is asking for double power. He's asking for double power. And he took in verse 13, and he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And in verse 14, he said, And he took the mantle of Elijah and fell from him and smoothed the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he has, and when, and when he also has smoothened the water, the water parted either and thither, and Elisha went over. The question is this Can you call the God of your predecessor today and he will answer you? He answered your predecessor. Will he answer you? We are you able to live the life that he lived, that she lived, that they lived? Because if you don't live that life, they live. If you don't live that life, she lives. If you don't live that life, he lives. You cannot get the same anointing that he has. Is it that you live the life that that person lives and you overlive that life, then you overget the anointing? And you will never remain the same when the power comes upon you. You will never remain the same. You can't remain the same. Chapter 2, the same chapter 2, let's go to verse 19 to 22. Verse 19 to 22. Let's read that place. That, that verse 2. Verse 19 to 22. Yes? If you are there, you can read, please. Second King chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. Oh, 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 oh. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 19. And the men of the city said unto Papa. Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant. As my Lord sees, but the water is not and the ground barren. 20. And he said, Bring me a new, a new cloth and put salt therein. And they brought it unto him. 21. And he, and he went forth unto the spring of the waters. And cast salt in deer and said, So says the Lord, I have healed this water. There shall not be free change any more debt or barren land. 22. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elijah, which he speaks. Immediately he received the power. He started using it for the glory of God. When you receive the power and you start on the seat, you first of all go and pray for president so that they can, win, they can issue you check. You first of all go to international programs and you will not be able to go to where their currency is low. You go to a place where their currency is high. 
so you can build mansion. Talk to yourself. Talk to your spirits. Go back to the cross and find out that you are not born again. And then come back to Christ. There are many positions in Christ Jesus. There are many posts. Pastors, preachers, evangelists, prophet, prophetess, dream tellers. You know, so many. Let us share that position. Let us attain each one. And for a define of the body of Christ, not for what? Not for our selfish interests. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Where is the Elijah of today? Where is Elijah of today? Where is Paul of today? Where is Timothy of today? Where? Yes, where? And where is Joshua and Moses of today? Who will not fight for post, but we wait willingly to be chosen by God. That is how the message of today comes. Greater work than this you shall do. Greater work than this shall you do. Greater work than your predecessor shall you do. Not lesser work than him you must do. No, greater work. And Jesus said, if any man believe in me, the work I do, he shall do twice. Remember, Jesus raised dead. How many dead have you raised? How many dead, dead have we risen? Jesus did a lot in those days. Old time religion. Old time religion. They do greater than their master. But new time religion, we do lesser than our leaders. May the Lord save us in the mighty name of Jesus. I want all of us to bow down our head and unmute our mic. I want to unmute everybody. I want you to open your mouth and pray now. And tell God, the Father, have mercy upon me. Help me to do more than my predecessor. Help me to do more than the person that brought me to Christ. Help me to do more work, greater work. Can you lift it up? Let's just help and pray.